Oh. Hi, all. I'm Dan Smegrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Today is Thursday, October 7th, 2021, and you're watching WGAN-TV Live at 5. We have an awesome show for you, Matterport Service Providers, how Matterport is used to create Xactimate insurance claim documentation. And here to talk to us about this topic is Andy McCabe. Andy is founder and licensed insurance adjuster and Xactimate team leader for claims delegates in Ben, Oregon. Hey, Andy, good to see you. Good to see you, man. Thanks for being on the show. Yeah. Andy, we got a lot to cover today. By the end of today's show, I'd like to feel like we've covered how a Matterport tour is used to create Xactimate insurance claim documentation, if it's necessary to use Matterport True Plan to create an Xactimate, what's involved in doing Matterport scans of a fire or flood damaged or hurricane damaged space, and how do Matterport service providers get business in the space of fire, flood, natural disasters. Does that sound like we could uh, get that done for MSPs by the end of the show? We will squeeze it in. We'll get awesome. a shoehorn if we have to. All right. Well, awesome. Andy, be before we jump into the topic, though, uh, tell me about claims, doc, uh, claims Delegates. Claims Delegates is a, uh, an Xactimate estimating and claims consulting firm. I started in 2012 after spending uh, the first part of the 2000s in the restoration industry. I was a water damage technician. I was a estimator project manager for various restoration contractors. I was a general manager for a couple large regional restoration contractors. And then 2012, uh, I wanted to branch out on my own. I, I was, I'm a terrible project manager. I hate dealing with people. So I wanted to go just straight estimating. So that's what I did. I started offering estimating services to contractors in my space who didn't have necessarily have the in-house expertise uh, that it takes to run the Xactimate program. Xactimate's a beast. It takes years to master it. And uh, so I just started offering those services and it was off to the races since then. Awesome. Uh, uh, what's your sweet spot in terms of clients? My best clients are contractors, general contractors that are either just getting started in the restoration industry uh, or want to get into the restoration industry. I, I see claims delegates as this, this gateway drug, as it were, to the restoration industry. Uh, uh, we provide the tools that you need to speak the insurance lingo. Uh, mainly Xactimate, but other things as well when it comes to claims handling stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I want that, that uh, one to $5 million contractor that doesn't want to spend 150 k a year on a project manager estimator um, and, and wants to get really top quality estimates to, their, to the adjusters they, they're servicing and their clients. And, and does that builder uh, need to be in Bend, Oregon? Uh, I hope not because that'd make a really small market for me. <laughs> yeah, we, we service, we service folks nationwide. It's, uh, across the country. We actually, I just got back from, uh, New Orleans and I was working for the couple contractors down there and we're going to do a little show and tell here on one of the projects I saw while I was down there. So coast to coast, uh, it's been a lot of time in the Bahamas last year, uh, doing hurricane Dorian stuff. Um, and yeah. I, I like to travel when, yeah, when the when when the proverbial crap hits the fan, I go, and that's uh, that's just the industry we're in. Okay, well, you you, you mentioned uh, New Orleans hurricane. Uh, uh, sh uh, show us and tell us about the ex Xactimate uh, from from New Orleans. Yeah, so my my system going in is is being a remote worker i need the ability to do as much as i can without being on site uh, and when i go on site i need to be able to use my my time as efficiently as possible can, can we can we look at the exactimate first and, and then we'll we'll talk about that because yeah, I, sure. I i i, I sus suspect a, a lot of our viewers matterport service providers They've heard of Xactimate, but they don't know exactly what that is. All so right, let's dig in. So we kind of have a common language here of what we're talking about. 
Let's but I, I think do. that would be helpful. Yeah. All right. So that's the Matterport. You guys know what that looks like. But this is Xactimate. We're looking at the, this is the output of all the inputs. Um, this was a combination of a Matterport scan and a hover report. And when you get into Xactimate, this is just the pretty graphical version of it. But the nuts and bolts is uh, very much more complicated. It takes you take this sketch and it breaks it down into these rooms. And then I can start taking these rooms. Um, let's just use the kitchen, for example. Let's say we're going to paint the kitchen. All I got to do is P and T, seal and paint, walls and ceilings. And I don't even know what that measurement is, but Xactimate knows because we sketched it. Xactimate knows that that kitchen is however big that kitchen is. Here we go. There's the kitchen. Cabinets and everything. But when I'm in here doing the kitchen, I seal and paint that kitchen. I put in walls and ceilings. Xactimate already knows there's 431 square foot of walls and ceilings. And when you go one step further, we're going to mask before we paint. Uh, but I want to do the perimeter of that ceiling and the perimeter of the floor. Perimeter of a ceiling is 25 linear feet. I didn't measure that. Matterport measured that and then Xactimate measured that. So this, that's the, the main reason I use Matterport is to get these measurements so I don't have to use a tape measure anymore. So I mean, that's, the, that's the end result. So, so who needs this Xactimate? Why, I, we, we kind of have a sense of like what it is visually and measurements and information, but who, who needs this Xactimate? Why is this extra step even necessary? Uh, you shoot a Matterport tour, you can see all the damage. Why, why do you need to convert Matterport into an Xactimate? Right. It's in an ideal world, you don't need Xactimate. Uh, but uh, insurance companies and their infinite wisdom and their, their, their never ending quest to hold on to uh, premium dollars uh, make these requirements. Uh, but at the end of the day, Xactimate is, it enables people to come with an apples to apples comparison and get very granular in the detail. Uh, and that granularity of detail is, is what's so important when you're dealing with, with insurance claims. Uh, we need to be able to say, you know, I'm going to take your Xactimate versus my Xactimate, and we can see very quickly what the differences are. Uh, it's harder to see the differences when a contractor writes a, an estimate on a napkin and, and then, you know, maybe the insurance adjuster writes it in a different platform, making that comparison and trying to say, is this a fair loss settlement offer or not? It's very hard when you're using two different languages. So that's, so that's where Xactimate came in. Uh, so uh, let me just see if I can put that in context. So sure. as a homeowner, my wife and I have had three unrelated floods in our house. And I think one of them, been quite some time, was about $150,000 in mm -hmm. damage on three different floors. So the insurance company came out and created this Xactimate. Mm -hmm. And then the general contractor came out and made another Xactimate. Mm -hmm. And the floor guy, he took a lot of measurements. He didn't create a, an Xactimate, but he did a lot of measuring. Yeah, so a lot of measuring. Yeah. What, what is all this measuring and Xactimate? So, it, so this is so that the general contractor or me as the homeowner can get reimbursed and made whole for the amount of the loss. Yeah, in an insurance claim situation, it's the easiest way to, to quantify the loss. Yeah, it's, it, it's the easiest way to say, this is, this is the amount of my loss. Uh, and in Xactimate, you can change, you can change material pricing, you can change measurements, obviously, you can change, uh, it, 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 there's a lot of different methodologies that go into it, but it's all based on the same language. And so you're speaking the insurance language uh, enables, you know, better communication and theoretically better payouts. 
So we'll assume that there's been some process of remediation. There's blowers that come in to dr dry stuff. At some point, the insurance company and general contractor need to agree on how much we're going to reimburse uh, the homeowner, uh, essentially, so that we can pay the general contractor to fix our house. Sure. So, so this exactimate is a is a way to uh, communicate uh, how much paint, how much how much wood, how much cement, how much labor, how much how much everything is going to cost. Mm -hmm. so, and the opposite, the alternative to that is uh, a real what I call a real bid. A contractor sits down, he runs through what he thinks he's going to spend on labor and materials and what it's going to take. He puts on his markup. And, and but the, the problem with that from the insurance adjuster's point of view is it's very opaque. It's very, you know, you, you get a contractor that, that, that you know, a regular contractor put together that estimate you know, for 150 grand for your house. It's going to be 15 line items, right? It's going to be I'm going to, this is much I'm paying this much on flooring. It, it's going to be, you know, 15 to 20 lines, you know, plus a markup and he's done. Well, the equivalent exactimate report is going to have well over a hundred line items, probably closer to 250. Um, so it's, it's, well, I think the, the prior way is a better way to do it because I think it's just more honest. Yeah. You know, this is what it's going to cost. Uh, there is just a, a next level of gamemanship when it comes to comes to exactimate, and that's frankly why I like to be on the cutting edge. I want to be. I want to win that game. I want to win the exactimate game, and the way to do that is do things uh, quicker, better, and more efficiently. Okay, so we'll assume that if there's fire or flood or hurricane or wind or some damage, and the owner of that space is going to get reimbursed for, from, from insurance, they'll need an exactimate. Now, yeah. we're obviously a community about Matterport. So uh, like, well, what do you need Matterport for? Why don't you just go out and measure the space with a tape measure or with a laser measure? Well, I'll tell you why, because I'm very expensive and I'm not very accurate. I'm not a detailed oriented person. So uh, you take somebody like me, uh, I charge, you know, my right now, my rack rate is $150 an hour. Uh, drive out to a property, spend a couple, three hours scanning it and drive back. I'm four hours into this thing. And then I haven't even, that just gets me my scan. That doesn't get it into Xactimate. So yeah, the alternative to using a Matterport scan is handwriting. It is taking a laser tape out and, and writing things down and, and, and creating a hand-drawn thing. You know, there's other things out there. There's DocuSketch, there's Magic Plan. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of players coming to the market right now trying to do that function. Uh, but I just, I just found Matterport is the most efficient right now. It's, it's the best use of my time and I don't have to do it. I can hire that function out. I can find somebody with the help of your network as well Actually, it's, it's, I got a couple of success stories for you on that one. Um, I can I can be ev virtually this? everywhere. How about this, Andy? Uh, let's do this maybe in a linear fashion because you you mentioned New Orleans. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you start with either the phone call or the text or the email that you got that initiated a, a Matterport scan in New Orleans and take us from that call, email, or text smoke signal. Mm -hmm. all the way through to uh, that exactimate that you were showing us. So I went down there uh, and I found myself sitting with a public adjuster. Public adjuster is uh, an adjuster that handles insurance claims on behalf of the insured, uh, the opposite side of the table of the carrier's uh, insurance adjuster. Uh, and this public adjuster was sharing an office. He was actually borrowing an office from a general contractor. Well, Hurricane Ida was a big storm and it affected a big area. So every single contractor in New Orleans and Metairie and all the surrounding areas, they're swamped. They're busy. They can't, they can't physically get to every address that, that they're getting called to. Uh, so this guy said, hey, 
do you, you write exact made estimates? And I said, well, I, I do that and I do your inspection for you. And you said, how do you do that? And I said, well, I use this thing called Matterport. And he'd never heard of it. Um, so, you know, I brought my camera down there. Um, this particular scan I'm going to show you uh, was done with one of these. It wasn't even the Pro 2. And that's uh, an Insta 361 X2? This is the X2. Yep. Okay. Uh, actually, this, I take it back. It wasn't this particular one. It was a Theta V that this scan was taken with. Okay. A Rico Theta uh, V. Mm -hmm. Theta V. Yeah. Okay. I like, I like the Z1 better. You know, for all y'all who are keeping notes at home, uh, the V just doesn't have the clarity. Um, it doesn't have a big enough sensor uh, to get, you know, just not, the, the scans don't look as crisp. They, I still get the data I need, but I don't, I, I prefer something a little more crisp. So uh, this guy said, hey, here's an address, go. Uh, no one's there. Um, so, so I went and I pulled up to the house and I could show you what we saw. Let me get out of, Oh, I got to go back to hover. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen yet. Hold on. Let me get logged in. Then I'll share my screen. Okay. This this is hover, H-O-V-R. H-O-V-E-R dot T-O. Dot T-O. So I think I can uh, click on that. That goes full screen. Okay. So this is... Which is super cool. And we write about that in the We Get Around Network forum, wganforum.com. So you got to see a... Did you create the exterior hover? I did. Okay. I did. So we went, uh, we arrived, uh, got access from a neighbor to get inside. Um, but I mean, this is pretty typical of what you're going to see in New Orleans everywhere right now. Piles of garbage. Uh, and then blue tarps on roofs. Um, but as we got into this thing, here's the scan we took when we got there. Um, it was not as bad as we thought. Um, we're, you know, we did our, I'll just give you a quick little tour of the house. And we're looking around going, man, I don't see a lot of damage until we get to the back of the house. And then we start seeing there's, there's where the water got in, collapsed in there. Uh, but yeah, we took a couple, I don't know if he, I don't even know if he was there two hours, probably not two hours. Um, he got through this thing pretty quick. So there's, you guys know what a Matterport scan looks like. Uh, and so did you did take a, some uh, some laser measurements as well, just so you would be able to get a proper scale on this? Uh, no, no, I don't. I don't do that. So, uh, because frankly, we're not we're we're playing horseshoes and hand grenades here. We're not we're not doing brain surgery. So, uh, you know, getting that level of verifiable accuracy is just not important to what I do. Okay. Yeah, we're not, it, it just, I believe the software, I, I have, I have faith. I have faith in the software essentially. And, you know, sometimes it's not accurate a hundred percent, but it's accurate enough for me. Okay. Uh, so this, this was uploaded uh, when he was in the driveway pulling away, it was processed pretty quickly the same day. Uh, so that same day, now I shipped this off to get my sketch done. Um, but I'll show you the process that, that goes through to, to get from this to this. Okay. Why is my measurements not showing measurements? There we go. But it starts here. So I've got a service that does this. We can... You know, obviously we can we can measure anything, right? We can come in here and measure anything we want. You guys have been using this for a while. You know this, right? So that countertop is 16 foot three. You know, we can measure things like ceiling heights and whatnot. But the first thing I like to do is get get my floor plan. And yeah, we could order a floor plan and you know, we could go pay for that. Um, 
right? What does that cost? I, don't, I forget what that costs, but so you, you have two options. The, the first is to order a Matterport 2D schematic floor plan. Yeah, here. So normal, we could do, yeah, normal charges could would be one be, of those. Would be fifteen dollars unless you pay for rush or mm -hmm. super rush, or you do so much work with Matterport that you have yet uh, a different starting point for calculating the rates. The right. second is that you could order a Matterport true plan, which creates the file that can be imported into exactimate right and then but the third option we're... would be to trace over the floor plan that we were just looking at maybe there's a fourth option which is send it off to yet another service to, <laughs> to create yes. an exactimate it kind of, those are kind of the four options yes. yeah and, and in restoration your end goal is that exactimate file uh the extent the file extension for an exactimate the file is ESX. It's a .esx, um, much like a .pdf or a .jpg. Uh, so your end desire, your end goal is a uh, accurate ESX file based on this scan. But as you can see, I don't even have the option to get an ESX file. I couldn't order a true plan on this because it was taken with a spherical camera. It ah, wasn't good, good point is that in or, it, it, let, let me clarify even a little bit more to order a 2D schematic floor plan or an exact or, or a Matterport true plan, you must be using a Matterport Pro 2 camera. So you couldn't or, even use an Insta 361 X2 or a Rico Theta V or Rico Theta Z1 and be able to, you can't, you, Matterport doesn't allow you to order floor plans or- well, No, I could get a floor plan. I mean, it's gonna let me right there. They'll give me uh, a floor plan for 15 bucks. Really? That I'm surprised. But they, they're, I, I think they're, they're working on their backend software. You know, they just released um, Capture for Droid uh, today. For Android, right, so that may be, uh, in, in fact, uh, the announcement today, Matterport, capture for Android is actually for beta. Uh, yeah. so that's yeah. a beta version that's out. Um, but this would be new to me if you could order a Matterport 2D schematic floor plan from a Matterport tour that was created with the Rico Theta V or Rico Theta Z1 or Rico Theta V. Yeah. That would be a surprise to me. Um, and yeah, I've done it. I've done it from these scans. Uh, but what I'd prefer is, is to, you know, that's just more steps to get to what we need. What we need is the ESX. We need the ESX. So I can't even get the ESX from this. I use uh, a different camera. So if you did use the Pro 2 and you ordered the Matterport floor plans, uh, I want to say they come in three different file formats, but ESX is not one of them. Cor correct. You, so, the, yeah. so do you prefer to 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 work off of the Matterport floor plan view, or to have your uh, colleague that's creating the uh, Exactimate work off of this floor plan versus a Matterport? To that's what they do. Floor yeah. plan. So I'm gonna let me show you. I'm not. I got to get to edit. I'm gonna edit here. All right. Let's make this bigger. Uh, and I move, move this camera over here. So the first thing I do, I need to set my scale. So I set 20 foot scale. I don't care where this line is, as long as it's 20 foot and it's relatively straight. Come on. Come on. Oh, let me zoom in. Well, I, I because there's no data there where you're where you're dropping your point, I would be surprised if your program lets you do that. Well, uh, it knows how long. It but knows how long. Typically, it's lines. looking for data in order to grab. So, if you went over to the right where there was actually scan data, where you see images, then yeah, you probably shouldn't have any trouble dropping it. Oh, you were able to drop it. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Let me get it centered. Uh, and then I take a picture of that, make sure my option to show measurements is on, make sure the whole thing is centered well enough. Oh, 
Come on. Let's go right there. I'd like to keep, try to get it straight if I can. I think I messed it up. I did mess it up a little bit. Come on. Come on. Get straight. Mm. This is the hardest part. Got it. Straight enough. Okay. Taking my picture. Boom. View my picture. I probably have to do it outside of, okay, there it is. Outside of full screen view. Download it. I'm going to go ahead and download it to, yeah, it's right there. JPEG. Jamale. Now I come back over to Xactimate. I'm going to not mess up this file. I'm going to open a different brand new one. Okay. Or just one that's empty. Let's just do this one. This is an older one. It doesn't matter. So what we use in Xactimate is called the image underlay function. Um, and I just switched to uh, Xactimate X1. The previous version was Xactimate 28. I've been using for years and now they just switched up. So things are a little bit wonky, but I can load import underlay image, go to that job I just did. And there's our export we just did. And the first thing Xactimate asks you to do is set the scale. So right there. And there-ish, that is a 20 foot line. Okay. And now in Xactimate, I have this picture that I can now, it's set to scale. I pull a room in and put it right there. This is probably the living room. And then I just trace it out. Sixteen eleven. that's probably 17 foot. And I like to have the space open at the same time. So I can go into this room and double check my ceiling height. About nine foot. So my ceiling height is nine foot. It's a box ceiling. And then I just start adding rooms. So, I mean, that is, it's, it, it's an incredibly simple and elegant solution to an expensive problem. Um, I can get this done. You know, I don't do a lot of this anymore. I hire it out. Um, so I can get this done for about half of what Matterport True Plan costs. And I can use the, the spherical cameras and not the Pro 2. Uh, the, the spherical cameras just allow you to scan a property so much faster. Um, it's, it's just not as cumbersome. Here we go. We've got our entry. Entry for your, that ceiling height is probably much taller. Yeah. Much, much taller. Oh, how tall is that ceiling? Couple different ceiling heights. Let's just pick one. But this is what this is what they do. So you just now it's just a matter of running the virtual tape measure, getting the you know getting your heights right. Come on. Oh. Can you can you take us back to the Xactimate that you showed earlier that that has been completed? Yeah. Let's go back to that. So that's. You can see the yeah. virtual model starting to take shape right yeah. there. And uh, I think you've answered a couple questions here uh, in terms of which camera, uh, Matterport Pro 2 3D camera, that may be the preference of some. Uh, Matterport service providers probably already have that camera. Mm -hmm. But I'm hearing from you is an 
a Ricoh Theta Z1, probably your preferred camera of, of choice for 360s. On residential. On, on residential. residential. On residential. On, on, on medium, small to medium size residential. Um, but on commercial, things start falling apart. Um, you need, the, 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 the app needs the data from the lasers to, to cover distance. So uh, when you're doing a big commercial space, um, uh, things like I've done a couple hotels, 60,000 square foot over five floors, you want, uh, you want the lasers, you want the Pro 2. Um, and once you get into something bigger, you're going to use those April tags extensively. Uh, okay. Uh, we write extensively about Matterport April tags in the We Get Around Network forum. Uh, WGANforum.com. You can also search on the keyword in the forum large or April tags uh, if you're interested in a deeper dive on that topic. So, uh, so a Matterport Pro 2 3D camera, if you're working on a commercial space or a larger space, if you really have just a smaller amount of fire, flood, uh, hurricane damage, then you may be perfectly fine with a Ricoh Theta Z1 or an Insta360 1X2. Mm -hmm. uh, today is Thursday, October 7th to uh, 2021. So those are the cameras as of today. Uh, then I think what you just showed, uh, Andy, was you didn't, you didn't need to order a Matterport. Um, I didn't need a floor plan or a true plan. Yeah. It didn't need a Matterport 2D schematic floor plan, which may, depending on what you, uh, normal turnaround might be 24 hours if you pay for rush or super rush. So from your perspective, you don't need that at all. You can go use the Matterport floor plan view within the Matterport uh, tour, the digital twin and create the Xactimate directly. And then yes. I think what I also heard is while you could order a Matterport true plan, which creates the .esx file that can be imported into Xactimate. Mm -hmm. uh, sounds like you have a solution for doing it at about half the cost. And uh, have you done a side-by-side -side comparison of the actual work to look at a Matterport true plan within Xactimate, maybe the same space done uh, by, by your team? Yes. And, and the detail of, of the work product from my team is superior. Uh, what, what, you know, at the end of the day, none of this is AI, right? There's Matterport doesn't have, have a computer doing this stuff. Uh, Matterport has an army of Xactimate folks doing this stuff. And just by virtue of how long they've been doing it tells me how much experience their folks have. Um, I don't know if they're onshore, nearshore, or offshore, but um, the Matterport, yeah, I'll show you uh, one example why I, I always shy away from, um, uh, from using TruePlan is I don't get these cabinets. You see these green boxes here? Oops. Yes. I don't, TruePlan doesn't accommodate for those. And if you want these windows, measured accurately, TruePlan co costs more to do that. Um, so all these little details, I need these measurements to replace this kitchen. I need to know how many, you know, these cabinets. And yes, I could go into the space myself and measure them, um, but it's a whole lot easier when they're already in, uh, in my sketch for me. And I, and I, I guess to put it in context, since I've, I've been lucky enough to, to, to have been through the fire, been through flood damage multiple times, is that may be the difference with, with uh, getting $150,000 reimbursed by the insurance company versus getting $125,000 or getting $100,000 is that level of detail to say, no, it's not just paint and drywall and call it a day. It's paint, it's drywall, it's crown molding, there's insulation behind the drywall, there's boxes where outlets are. And if you don't capture all that stuff, you're not going to get reimbursed for it. So uh, from, from, from your perspective, from Claims Delicate's perspective, uh, you're able to get a Xactimate done for half the cost of a Matterport True Plan 
and feel like that it in, includes more stuff in order to help your clients get reimbursed more money. Is that, yeah. is that the gist of it? Yeah. I say that the, the thickest file wins. So the more detail you're able to present, uh, the more data you're able to present to back up your case, uh, the better case you have. And you know, the current state of technology, adjusters aren't using this, carriers aren't using this technology yet. I'm sure they will in the near future. They're going to put on a robot or something. Um, so when I come with, I come with the Matterport and I link the Matterport into the Xactimate file that I create. Um, and then I have this highly detailed Xactimate sketch uh, that most suggestors couldn't even touch. They can't, they can't do that. They don't have the experience to do that. They don't have the expertise. Um, add all these things up and my file is thicker than theirs. So my data is better. And so I have a higher chance of winning. And, and when you said 150 versus 120, that's real. That's real. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I, I, I experienced it be, because the insurance company sent out their own adjuster to create the Xactimate. And our general contractor created an Xactimate of the exact same space. One would think that both captured $150,000 worth of <laughs> construction or renovation that would need to, to, to take place to make us whole. But that was exactly the point. I, I think our builder uh, uh, truly found us maybe $25,000, $35,000 more than what the insurance company's first offer to us was. Yeah. Well, the, uh, the insurance company, adjuster gets paid to create a fail a, 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 a claim settlement tool the contractor gets paid to write an estimate so they were both an exactimate but one they're, they're not for the same purpose one was created so they could just settle a claim and, and move a file off their desk the other one was created by a contractor so we could actually make a living and make money and make you whole um, yes, the, so the problem is if the general contractor doesn't doesn't capture all of that, then when he does the re the the the, the renovation, the, uh, that either we're going to be disappointed because he hasn't put in that crown molding or the light fixtures that we had or the number of power outlets that we had or mm -hmm. two by fours that were uh, a mess, mm -hmm. uh, and he's either going to not make a profit on his job because he's trying to get us back to where we make us whole or he's going to fall short. So he's, he's truly motivated. In fact, he'll make more money because of his, his profit margin is based on plus cost. The bigger the cost then the bigger the profit margin. Well, the, what adjusters won't tell you is a claim's not closed until it's closed. So if he truly didn't catch crown molding, and there was legitimately crown molding in there that was torn out. There's there's always there's a supplement process. Uh, most every claim performed by a general contractor has at least one supplement, if not more than one, because the reality is there are things in the house you can't see. There are things that are going to happen that you can't anticipate. Which and, happened with us. They opened up yeah. walls, and you know. Yeah. Wow, look at that. Uh, in our case, based on some of the water damage, the, the two by fours had disintegrated. They weren't there. So uh, there was a lot of stuff that had to be done. Where I, I, I say it a little bit differently is the, the, the remediation company came out, put some things on the wall that told them what the, what the moisture was, and they didn't take the wall down. And the general contractor mm -hmm. came out and he put his measurement thing on the wall. He says, no, no, those walls have to come out. They're there, there's water damage, you know, there, there's a problem. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, bingo, the insurance adjuster came out and he, he did with the walls intact. And then as soon as our general contractor came in and did the, the, the measure the uh, moisture testing on the wall, he says, nope, those walls got to come down. He took down the wall. And then he, you could see that all of a sudden, all the two by fours, vertical we're, we're missing from a corner and the only way to fix that was was to actually cut up about a square yard 
of our floor. Mm. And as soon as he, and, and it happens on our main level of the house, it's all hardwood floors. Mm. So, uh, you know, that, that meant the, all the hardwood floors had to be refinished. So yep. all of a sudden, you know, you, you find it's that, you know, it, yep. it, it really, it really did. So someone who really knows what they're doing in terms of finding the problems and correctly documenting, yeah, can be a difference between 150,000 claim reimbursed and 100 or 125,000 uh, uh, documented mm-hmm. and reimbursed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I, you, you had, sh- you had showed us um, the damage for the hurricane in New Orleans. Uh, mm-hmm. It didn't look like you needed to do it, have any special gear any spe- or anything special, but what happens when you have a fire or a flood? Does, does a Matterport service provider have to wear something different or act differently or well, what's going on? You're going, into, you're going into a construction zone in the very least, in a disaster zone usually. Uh, so you want to you want to have your wits about you and and do take some common sense uh, after a fire especially if there are so many toxins in the air um, you know a fire burns everything plastics uh, organics you know, everything and that leaves a residue you don't want to breathe that and even even this house we just looked at if we st- if those walls were open you'd see mold you don't want to breathe that either. So if you're going to be working in this environment, I would invest in a good half face respirator. Um, Spell that for me. Half face. It's a half, instead of a full face, half face respirator. H-A-L-F. Yes. Half, half face respirator. Yeah. Not, not just an N95 paper mask. You want something, something real. Um, something's going to filter out those toxins that we know are in the air. Uh, and when it comes to things like mold, you may not be uh, one of those folks, unfortunate folks that's very allergic to it, but you can develop sensitivities over time. Um, I have a good friend who works, he is a mold remediator and he never had problems with mold, but now he can't go any, he can't go into a home with mold without a respirator on. Otherwise he's out for a day or two just with respir- respiratory distress and everything else. So it's serious. Uh, we don't, you know, there's a lot of cowboys, especially in the contracting and restoration world that I don't need that, you know, well, guess what? The older I get, the more I need to protect myself too. So I'm not afraid to put on a mask. Um, I think nowadays we're all used to wearing masks anyway. Yes. And um, anything regarding the equipment? Is there something different? Are you bringing lights or is there, are you well, with uh, uh, on your tripod so that it, it doesn't get wet or soot on it? Uh, no, I don't protect my tripod. I mean, it's, that's a throwaway piece of device, you know, the throwaway piece of equipment for me. Um, well, sort of, I've been using the same one. It hasn't broken yet, but I'm not afraid to stick it in, you know, debris and, and wetness. Uh, you do need lights. Uh, the Pro 2 does pretty good in low light situations, but even then you want to be able to supplement that. Um, I've got, I, if, I, if I had it here, I'd show you, but I, it's, I left it in New Orleans. So I've got um, something that looks like this. This is, this is just a Milwaukee, Milwaukee uh, light. And this is not the exact same one. I've got one that takes those little, those long batteries, Milwaukee batteries. These have a magnet on the end. And I took one of those, those cell phone, you know, these little cell phone magnet things. And I put, put that on the top of my pro two and this just sticks right there and it's got a rechargeable battery. So I got about four of those batteries uh, and you just turn that sucker on sits on top of the pro two spins around. Yeah. That's what I did these hotels with just, just this, this much light. And how did you get your cell phone case to affix to the Matterport pro two 3d camera? No, not the case. Um, no, these, the, the little, I'm, I'm the, ah, piece of the metal. metal. Okay. The piece of metal. Did, did that, did that stick or was that magnet? Yeah, these these are specific to magnet stuff, right? So you got 
this is just a uh, uh, this is just like for your car, right? You stick yes. your phone sticks there. Yes. Well, how'd you get it to stick to the Pro Two? Well, these have sticky on them. Ah, sticky. That that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, these come it's from not a magnet. It's yeah. sticky. So one right. side is sticky, but it's actually a magnet. Once you put that magnet on it, yeah. This this came this came with this car charger thing. Yeah, it's a piece of metal, but they come with glue on the back and you peel this glue off and you stick it to wherever you want it to stick to. So awesome. Uh, yeah. And in, in fact, we, we talk a lot about lights uh, in the, we get around network forum, multiple options, go to the, we get around network forum, so forum.com. Look for the tag uh, either lights, L I G H T S. Uh, and then you might try halo as a tag. You might try Lytra. Uh, but uh, lights will pull up a lot of different lighting solutions that Matterport service providers have done. The one you have shared is not one that was discussed in the We Get Around Network forum. Well, this because this is a this isn't a a this is a, a solution I came up with. This is not a manufacturer. You know, yes. this is not a solution someone came up with to make money. Yeah, uh, this is something I came up with to solve a problem. And I think a lot of those times, those guys with the GoPro mounts and and all this jazz. Well, you're you're over solving a problem that can be very, very simple. All right, Andy, we're going to call you MacGyver from now on. <laughs> you're, you're MacGyvering it. So, uh, so if, so, so I, I understand what an Xactimate is. I understand what it's used for. I understand there's a lot of efficiency using Matterport to get to that Xactimate. Um, if I'm a Matterport service provider, and I'm, I'm not uh, thrown or put off by the fact that I may be working in a hazardous environment and I need a half mask and maybe some other gear to keep me safe. Um, how do Matterport service providers uh, get business related to fire, flood, natural disasters? Everything, yeah. <laughs> So you want to be able to, you want to draw a lot. You want to, who's your user? Who's your target? You know, is your target uh, the, the property owner? And maybe you have a relationship with a big, uh, big property owner, big apartment complex, whatever else. And they have a big loss. Uh, and you, if you know about it, you have a prior relationship. That's, that's number one. I always go prior relationships. You go to them and say, Hey, I've got this thing. You know, we didn't, we've done Matterport for you before, but here's a new application. And you draw that, you want to draw that line between here's the Matterport scan. And maybe you, you bring up an example of an Xactimate sketch, just like I did here and just show them side by side and say, you can, you're going to need this Xactimate. Um, we can get it from this. Um, short of that, short of a prior relationship, uh, every restoration contractor in the world needs Xactimate. So you just got to make that connection for them and say, hey, yeah, do you really want to take the time to send your very expensive project manager out to these sites to gather this data when it's just data gathering? When, when I can give you this solution, here's your solution, here's your Xactimate ESX file, and I got it from my Matterport scan. You make that connection, you know, it's, it's a tough connection sometimes. You know, I, I still run into contractors like, oh, I don't need a Matterport, I don't need a Matterport. And then I say, well, okay, you're going to pay me $155 an hour to go out to hand sketch that? Oh, no, no, no. I don't want that. Uh, okay, well, which is it? <laughs> which is it? Uh, but they... Are there other stakeholders? Are there other others? So I, I, I've heard builder, property management company. Who, who else in my local market sh should I go talk to? And is that prior to there being a fire or flood or weather related damage, or this is just managing expectations forward to say you have a solution? It's always better to, to pre-sell, uh, you know, plant that idea of a seed that you have a service that they may need in the future. Uh, in the heat of the battle, after something happens is a terrible sign. It's not a good time to start selling people on new ideas. And I've been using this 
since 2018. There's people in my industry been using it longer than that, but this is very much still a very new idea. The concept, you know, people don't connect what, you know, people don't see all the data that goes into a real estate scan. Um, they just see pretty pictures, right? They, they see it as a sales tool, but they don't understand that underneath that pretty picture is some very, very valuable data. And it's very accurate data, especially if you're using the Pro 2. I mean, it's like 0.002% or something accurate. Um, it's the fidelity of that data is priceless. Once you can get somebody who's working in this environment to recognize that, um, the sell becomes easy because it's quick. It's you get, you know, it take me, if I needed to hand draw or come up with plans for a 60,000 square foot hotel and I didn't have Matterport, it'd take me a month, but I was able to go through it in three days. And then the, the work product at the end of that three days was, was tremendous. They're able to take that work product and build the rest of the claim file and go forward on it. To, to follow up on that. So if I, as a Matterport service provider, Part of my pitch, let's call it three things. That's about the most anybody can comprehend. First, uh, I can get the data collected at a much lower rate than sending your expert on site, particularly when it involves travel to and yep. from. So yep. I'm way less than your $150,000 Xactimate estimator on staff mm -hmm. cost. Second is we can capture the data way faster to enable the Xactimate to be created in a fraction of the time. In your example, three days instead of a month or two. Right. A month. Right. And third, that it captures all the data and the visuals that anyone would possibly need in an insurance claim. That and I would add, it captures that space in that moment in time. Two years from now, when this thing goes legal and they're going to court, what better tool do we have than to say, well, Miss Smith, was that crown molding really in that dining room? Well, let me show you, because on this date, there was a human being scanning this house. And oh, look at that. There it is. You go to the Matterport scan. I like to say, actually, it's not my saying. It's a friend of mine's. He says no file with a Matterport scan goes to trial. No file goes to trial. No file with no a Matterport, without goes a Matterport scan goes to trial. That, that is awesome. But so that's carrier, four reasons. The carrier recognizes the irrefutability of that data set. And they don't want to present if it, presuming that the carrier is in the wrong in the lawsuit, they're being sued. Uh, the carrier doesn't want that data, that information presented to a jury because it's sexy and it, it tells a great story. Um, so you tell the story using Matterport in deposition and discovery, they settle period into story. So, so let's call those four great reasons that a, a Matterport service provider can help a property management company, a, a building owner, uh, a renovation company. Uh, can I get paid more for doing Matterport scans that involve <laughs> fire, flood, hurricane damage <laughs> than I can scanning a residential house? What's the, what's the going rate? I don't operate in your world. What's the going rate for residential scheme? Uh, I, I don't even want to put a number out there, but let's just assume that it's it's lower than we all would like to get paid. Okay. I heard I heard you know two to five cents a foot. Uh, I would say that most Matterport service providers, if they're since you're gonna mention a number. I'm going to say, depending on what part of the country and the level of experience, the kind of clients you work on, 10 to 12 cents a square foot. And if you're in okay. a larger city and you got a lot of experience and you're working on something else, it may be as much as a quarter. And if you're oh. working on 25 cents a square foot, and if you're 
really adding a lot of value in the process. There may be other things that you're doing as part of your deliverable, mm. but it could conceivably be as much as 50 cents a square foot. Uh, I won't I won't tell you why I got a dollar a square foot on a project, but we were adding a huge amount of value uh, on that particular project. So uh, I would say uh, and then for maybe for Matterport service providers that are working on demand for another company, uh, it may be three to five to six or seven cents where they are a sub mm-hmm. to perhaps Matterport or one of 30 other companies that engage Matterport service providers Mm. on demand to scan typically residential, Mm. maybe commercial space. What about fire flood uh, weather damage? Can can I make more money in this vertical? Your your starting point is going to be 500 bucks on a small residential. I don't charge less than 1500. So... Uh, on the, so on the for a Matterport commercial. service provider that may be lucky to get a hundred ninety nine, two hundred and fifty dollars, yeah. maybe three hundred, three fifty. Oof. It's at least going to be five hundred dollars. It's it's five hundred dollars every day of the week, every day of the week. I don't start the truck for less than five hundred dollars. Um, so I but I along those lines, uh, I had a I had a I got a call. People in my space know me as as a Matterport guy, even though I tried to say I'm the Xactimate guy. No, you're the Matterport guy. Whatever. Um, they uh, so I got a call for a a fourplex in somewhere in Mississippi. Uh, they didn't want to get on an airplane and fly to Mississippi and do this job themselves. They're trying to find a resource. So I said, all right, I'll do it for twenty cents, twenty cents a foot. Uh, but I was able to find a guy through your network to do it for ten cents a foot. We get around network, yeah. our referral network. Yeah. And so I made 10 cents a foot for making a phone call on a connection. And that guy was more than happy to drive down there. Now, uh, you mentioned something about work environments and, 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 you know, being dirty and mucky. I did have a guy turn me down. Uh, he said, I don't, you know, this, there was no power. There's no electricity. Well, it's, that's not a, it wasn't an environment this Matterport service provider wanted to operate in. Um, But, and that was fine. I found someone who did it, but if you're not in the mood to work in a dirty, smelly, hot environment, don't do this work, but you be prepared to get $150 a scan instead of 500. So let's say I'm interested and maybe what you're helping motivate me is to say, hey, I can get $500 to $1,500 on a residential house that's had fire, flood, maybe partial fire, flood damage, uh, hurricane wind damage. Um, does that include delivering an Xactimate or, make, or delivering floor plants? Is this just delivering the Matterport tour? That's it. Yeah, I, I'd I'd say create a highlight reel. Do I need to provide snapshots? No, no just the Matterport tour. We don't need the snapshots. We don't use the snapshots. We don't use the tour. Uh, we just need the backbone, the back back data, the the the, the back office data. Um, so you mentioned uh, uh, Andy that you engaged a Matterport service provider. Is is that a one off, or do you do this? Uh, uh, are you are you looking for other Matterport service providers? I am always looking. I'm always looking. I think we can build a better network than Matterport can, and we can look after ourselves better than Matterport will. Um, so yeah, I would like to, you know, I did some work in, during the freeze in Texas. After I left, I there was some clients that wanted me back and I said, I can't do it. You know, you can't afford me, but here's a guy in Dallas that'll do it. DFW Virtual Tours was amazing. Uh, and I've used him five or six times since then. Um, because he's happy as a clam when I, you know, I told him I give him 500 bucks. He's, he jumped. And, and that's when I realized you guys aren't getting paid well enough from these realtors. Um, well, I mean, you're getting, you're, 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 you're making a living, but you're not, you're not really doing well. So I'm, I'm interested in, uh, you in engaging me, uh, is there an email address? Yeah. Just shoot, uh, Andy at claimsdelegates.com. Andy 
at yeah. claims, C-L-A-I-M-S-D-E-L-E-G-A-T-E-S.com. Mm -hmm. Andy at claimsdelegates.com. So uh, claims delegates actually engages Matterport service providers elsewhere in the United States when you don't want to get on a plane or, or go drive someplace. So it sounds like it actually saves you time, energy, effort. And, it helps everybody. It helps and, everybody. And do I have to have had fire or flood or wind damage experience in, in order to send you an email? No. No. Uh, Can you I, talk me through it? Of oh, like, this easily. is what's going to happen. Easily. You need to go buy the following things. You need the following lights. You need the following uh, half face mask. Uh, this is what this is what you need to do. It. I'll walk you through that piece of it. And the oh, by most, the way, after I help train you, then go pursue that kind of business locally. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so I think what I'm hearing is this is kind of this match where you're even though you you are the, the exact mate guy, uh, you're getting known in your space as the Matterport guy. Right. And as a result of that, people contact you, which makes it easy for you to sub out work to other Matterport service providers around the United States. Uh, and then you add an additional value on top of the Matterport tour by delivering an exact mate. Mm -hmm. Your client, exactly right. Yeah. Awesome, and, then, and I think I also heard uh, you talk about just to, to kind of point out is if you're a, a property management company in the United States uh, and you have builders on staff and you need to do an insurance claim, uh, that work can be outsourced. The Exactimate to insurance to uh, claims delegates. And if you're a general contractor builder and you want to get involved in doing renovation projects that involve insurance claims, but don't have that expertise, then they can reach out to, uh, to you, Andy, uh, claims delegates, Andy at claims delegates, uh, dot com is your email address. Mm -hmm. And you, they don't need to be in the same city because it's easy enough to engage a Matterport service provider uh, through the We Get Around uh, network, or I, sh I should mm -hmm. say that we refer to you or Matterport service providers contact you directly. And therefore, one way or another, we're going to help you match up a Matterport service provider to take care of that builder or property management company, get that Matterport scan uploaded to the claims delegates account, and then for you to add value on top of that, uh, creating Xactimate and the other documentation that, that, uh, that may yeah. be needed. Uh, exactly. What haven't we covered on the show today that we should talk about? Well, value add services. I think uh, your audience, if they're out there already and they're thinking about seriously doing restoration or insurance claims type stuff, they need to add an exterior scanning component. You know, as we all know, Matterport doesn't do exteriors. Uh, Pro 2 camera can, can't operate in broad daylight. Uh, the Thetas can, but um, I've, I've been using Hover and I, in very much the same way um, I use Matterport for the interiors. I use Hover for the exteriors. Uh, H-O-V-E-R dot T-O. T-O. Uh, uh, let's maybe save that for another show. Okay. Okay. Hover. And uh, we do talk about it in the We Get Around Network forum. Uh, Andy, uh, thanks so much for uh, being my guest today on the show. Absolutely. It's great to be here. We've been visiting with Andy McCabe. Andy is founder and licensed insurance adjuster and Xactimate team lead at Claims Delegates in Bender, Oregon. And you can email Andy at andy at claimsdelegates.com. For Andy and Ben, Oregon, I'm Dan Smakerod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum, and you've been watching WGAN-TV live 